Okay, so these are the tools that you'll need for rebuilding the Thomas Model 2680 compressor. Obviously, you'll need the rebuild kit. We have a quarter inch nut drive, T25 star drive, T27 star drive, screwdriver, um, gasket puller, or some sort of sharp device for pulling a gasket, ratchet wrench, um, torque wrench, and a little bit of lubricant and a dust brush. As you can see, this showed up to me uh, fairly dirty, so we're going to want to clean this up a bit. But first things first, uh, these head screws can tend to be a little bit tight, so we like to put a little bit of uh, solvent. I just got WD-40 in an um, eyedropper here. Go ahead and uh, lubricate those up a bit, let that settle in. Then we go ahead and dust this off as best we can. Okay, now that we're clean and the lubricant has had a chance to uh, penetrate, go ahead and remove the head screws. Discard this head, these head screws because the uh, rebuild kit comes with new ones. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the head. Sometimes these uh, head plates can be a little bit sticky against the head. If that's the case, then you can go ahead and uh, put a little flathead screwdriver right on this little lip here and, and bust it off, being careful not to uh, damage the head. As you can see, we have some gaskets in here that need to be removed. Being careful not to uh, scratch these head plates. And go ahead and discard those gaskets. They're also provided with the rebuild kit. And we have these flapper valves. You're going to use your quarter inch nut drive to remove this nut. discard these valves as well. Now when you flip these over, you've got additional gaskets and flapper valves. Again, removing the gaskets, being careful not to scratch the head plate. And those can be discarded. Again, using your quarter inch nut drive, go ahead and remove these flapper valves. Now as you can see, we've exposed the uh, piston and cylinder. Again, we want to go ahead and uh, lubricate these screw head screws just a little bit. You can go ahead and pull out these uh, piston sleeves or cylinders and get rid of them. These are provided in the rebuild kit. Usually you can get these with a hand drive. and remove these screws and these retainer plates and the cup seals. As you can see, the cup seals are pretty worn out, which is what's the main reason for uh, the poor compression. Now at this point in the instructions, I believe it tells you to remove these finger guards and make some adjustments to the piston. I recommend not performing that part of the rebuild as it's not necessary and it's virtually impossible to remove the fan blades to get to the piston without breaking the fan blades. Now the next step is reassembly. Go ahead and install the new piston sleeves, or cylinders, whatever you want to call it. You'll notice that the retainer plate for the cup seal has this small circle on it, which is uh, meant to line up with um, this little nipple that fits into a hole in the top of the head plate. Very important that you get that lined up properly or else the um, compressor will not be able to complete its full stroke. Go ahead and press 
back down into the piston sleeve, seated firmly against the head of the piston. Put in your screw. And go ahead and tighten with a T27 star drive. Now, this calls for 100 inch pounds of torque. I'm doing it by feel because I've rebuilt about a thousand of these things. But I'd recommend if you've never done it before to go ahead and use a torque wrench. Now, when this part is complete, you want to make sure that, again, that the pistons are in between strokes. Sometimes with the new cup seals in there, it makes for a very tight squeeze and it makes it difficult for the compressor to restart if it's at the top of its strokes. So now we're on to reassembly of the head plate, uh, which includes the gasket and flapper valves. Uh, first thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, dust this off with a soft bristle brush or a uh, clean rag, clean soft rag. We don't want to scratch anything, but we do want to remove any of the dust or debris on these head plates so that it doesn't get inside the compressor. And this is perhaps the most challenging part of the rebuild simply because the parts are very small to replace these flapper valves and uh, our hands are big. Especially challenging if you've had too much coffee in the morning, which I have. want to make sure that the retainer plate for these valves, there's the, letter, the word up on them and that needs to be facing up. This also has a uh, beveled edge on it that needs to be facing towards the flapper valve. Once you have those three pieces put together, you can go ahead and screw them down into the head plate. Now this is another challenging part here, just getting these all lined up. You want to get these as straight as possible. I like to get it snug. And then use some sort of flat edge to go ahead and uh, keep them from spinning when you tighten them down to, I believe it's 18 inch pounds is the specifications. Again, I'm doing this by feel. 18 inch pounds is not very much. It's very easy to strip these head plates, so be careful. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip them over. And install the flapper valves on the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and install the new gaskets, beginning with the cylinder side first. Make sure that those are seated firmly in there. And at this point, it's really important to make sure that when you reinstall these, that you've got them oriented properly for the flow. As you can see, the head plate is labeled intake and exhaust. Now, the in on the intake side, we want to make sure we have the holes with the valves on the exhaust side. So we'll go ahead and seat those down. going to go ahead and install the gasket and now we can go ahead and install the head. Next step is to go ahead and just set the head screws in the holes. the head plate 
down so that the gaskets underneath don't move. And we're going to tighten down these head screws, oh, just about finger tight. In a star configuration. I like to do two on one side, two on the other, and then go back and finish up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten these down to the torque specifications, which I believe is 40 inch pounds. And just as a note, if you don't have a torque wrench that measures in inch pounds, um, a foot pound torque wrench will work as well. You just divide the value by 12. And you tighten until your torque wrench makes a click. Test this by plugging it in and check some pressure. What I'm doing there is checking the compression by sticking my thumb on the intake hole. Um, when you stick your thumb on there, it should suck your thumb pretty well and make the motor bog down a little bit, um, and you should be getting good airflow coming out the exhaust. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that again. <laughs> 